part three in the series for reloading 45 ACP. I hinted at in one of the other videos when I was decapping that I do not prefer to prime in the press. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the mechanical advantage you get in the press because you can just have too many things go wrong while you're priming your brass. I prefer to hand prime and, and that's really what we're going to go over today. So thanks for joining me. Stick around. Thanks. All right. So we have our our materials laid out already to do our priming. Uh, this is a hundred rounds of ammo that we've already prepped for priming. Uh, this brass was cleaned in video one, uh, decapped and sized in video two, and today we're going to prime. Uh, this is the priming press I used, the RCBS hand priming tool. Uh, as you can see, it was about forty-two dollars, if you guys can catch that. But that's a couple years ago. But you could find these all day long, between thirty and fifty bucks. Uh, I like RCBS for this, but you could buy a Lee, uh, a Redding. Tons of companies make them, and they're all quality. And we also have a box of primers. These are Remington two and a half large pistol primers for forty-five ACP. Uh, the, you know, really, it's a matter of opinion what kind of primers you use. I personally find that if you stay with the big companies, CCI, Remington, like that, you're not going to have a problem. It's really a matter of preference. If you ask this question, you're going to get a million different answers. Everyone has what they like. You know, really, I buy what's on sale and buy it in bulk. So, uh, with that being said, let's break it down and get to priming some brass. Okay, well, first thing we're going to do is get out our hand priming tool and take a look at it and go over and see what we have. This is your primer tray and basically you'll put the primers in here make sure they're situated the way they need to be to prime into the case. Uh, one thing you'll see here is that this is ridged and what this allows you to do is when you flip your tr primers into it if you shake it a little bit they'll all go to the right orientation. We'll go over that when we actually get into uh, putting the primers into the tool. Then you have the tool proper uh, I can take this apart real quick just to show you how it works. Basically you have a collet here which acts as the raceway for your primer as well as the, the joining fixture to your shell holder that you'll put in. Uh, once you look inside the tool you have a little press that forces the primer up and into the shell. An interesting thing about this, if you buy one of these these tools, you might notice if you let it sit for a long time, um, it doesn't flow very well. It wants to get stuck as it forces the primer, it gets stuck as it goes down. Uh, I found probably the easiest and most simple way to, to lube this is get a pencil and just rub some graphite on it and it, it seems to work very well. What you don't want to do with these tools is run grease or oil. Uh, that can get into your primers and, and cause failure to fire. You, you don't want to put any lubricant anywhere near your primers. That's definitely a no-no. Uh, as you see right here on the bottom of the tool, you just have a lifting stud. And if you look into the tool, you can see you just have a spring and a receiver for that lifting stud. So as you squeeze the tool, the lifting stud forces that sleeve and that spring to push this rod up and through the collet that forces the primer into the brass. So really there's not much to this. Uh, they're really simple devices and they work very well. I, I prefer to use them just because you can really feel what's happening when you prime where I, I don't really think you can do that on the press. I've had you know quite a few mistakes trying to prime on the press and it just got to the point where I didn't feel comfortable doing it anymore. Okay, now that we have the press disassembled, let's go ahead and reassemble it. As you can see there's the receiving arm, the lifting arm, that actually comes in contact with this pivot arm that forces everything up. So you install your pivot arm, lean it forward, place it into the press, make sure you get in contact with that, lift it forward so you know you have good contact. 
we're going to go ahead and place in our collet. Get that in place. Everything's good there. So now we'll actually put in our press bar. It slips right in there. And then we're going to install the retaining arm. And this is what keeps it from overextending and actually losing contact with the pivot arm. All right, you want to try it. Make sure your arm has come up. And when you open it up, it goes down. So you can see the action, what happens there when you're priming. You see? And that's that. They're, they're very simple machines, so uh, there's not much to it. And now, on to primers. Uh, what we have here is a case of number two and a half Remington large pistol primers. Uh, if you open it up, you can see they come in little little field cases of a hundred. Uh, we actually have a hundred cases ready to be primed, so that's perfect. Uh, as we spoke about before, here's our primer tray. So what you see when you open these up is the primers are sideways. So I found the easiest way to do this, take your primer tray, put it there, flip everything over, and pull that off. Now you can see the orientation of the primers. You have the the inside case and you actually have what you would see on the outside of the case when it's primed. Now again the reason why this is ridged is that as you shake this the primers will actually self turn to the orientation you need. So you just keep shaking that until you get everything in the orientation that you need it. Every now and again you'll get a get one that doesn't want to flip for you but that's about it. Let me get a closer view of that for you so everyone can see. So that's what you want to be looking at when your primers are in your primer tray because as they feed into the machine they actually push up into the case. So that's good. So we can go ahead and put our top on. and lock it on. Now you're at the point where you're ready to insert your shell holder. It's a number two shell holder for 45 ACP. So you get your collet semi started, place your shell holder on top and you can see how it all would seem to fit into the ridges. Press it down and get it fully seated. And there you have it. So now we have everything together. Well again, test for function. You see how that comes up and retracts. At this point we can go ahead and assert our primer holder. And then you can see how they'll fall in. And now you see how there's a, a primer right there. So that's actually ready to be pushed into a shell. At this point, we get some of our nice clean decapped and resized brass. Slide it into the shell holder. Once you feel like it's in there good, just give her a press. And there you have it. Piece of prime brass. And again, we'll take a peek as you slide it this way. One of the primers will slide into the channel. Insert your piece of brass, give her a pinch, release it, and there you have a nice piece of prime, prime brass. Another thing I check here is to make sure everything's very, very close to flush. Uh, there's no issues with the primer. It hasn't been pressed or cross-seated or seated sideways. If everything looks good, move on to the next.
And now we're down to our last five out of a hundred. And I'm sure you'll hear proponents is about, you know, why hand prime? What's what's the point? Uh, I know the video is sped up a little bit, but I just did about a hundred cases in about five minutes real time. And uh, as you can see, when you pull on this, that's where you start hitting resistance and you pull it through. So you really have a positive feeling on if that primer is getting seated right. So that's really something you don't get on the bench and you know it's not really a big time eater and I just feel you get better results. And that's it guys. That's a hundred rounds in about five minutes. And one last thing I do with mine, my brass once I prime it is you can do a sanity check with your caliper. And here I'm not really measuring but I'm using the straight edge of the caliper to, to tell me if my primer is seated properly, if it's bulging out, or if there's any issues with that case. So you don't even have to turn it on. I just rub it on there, and you see you get a straight across slide. No issue on that straight edge, no kind of catch. That's a sanity check you can use, you know, every few cases if you chose to. Uh, one thing I found out when you when you prime, you hand prime, as you get used to it, you'll know if that primer seating properly by the tension on the device uh, you'll feel it and you'll feel it actually go into the primer pocket and you'll know that primer went in there you'll know if there's an issue or some kind of problem um, really easy really simple tool uh, I personally think it's the right way to do it if you're trying to get precision and you you really want to understand what's happening or if you're a beginning reloader uh, nothing against priming on the press this is just the way I prefer to do it